Hello, welcome to Huawei HMS Ecosystem Lecture Hall. This time, we will mainly study Huawei Push System, namely PushKit. This video is based on HMS 4.0 as a message push platform provided by Huawei for developers. PushKit establishes a message push channel from the cloud to the terminal. Through the integration of Huawei PushKit, developers can immediately notify users of the latest message through this high-speed channel. To build a good user relationship and quickly improve users' perception and activity. Through this video, you will easily master the implementation principle, capability, characteristics of the push function, and methods to quickly access and use the service in your apps. To realize this objective, it requires three stages. One, understand the capabilities, characteristics, and framework of PushKit. Two, preparation for connecting to PushKit SDK. Three, through the explanation of key PushKit interfaces to help developers understand the design and implementation principle of PushKit based on codes. At first, let's have a general view of the advantages of Huawei PushKit. It can simply be summarized as five points. One, improving DAU, daily active user. Two, high reliability. Three, precise push. Four, rich modes. Five, simple operation with powerful functions. You may not fully understand after knowing so much at once. We will introduce them in detail one by one. One, improving DAU. This is daily active user. At present, since the cost of acquiring new users is increasing rapidly, improving DAU grows into the key for us to make profit. So, what has Huawei PushKit done to improve DAU? Firstly, it has established a high-quality message channel from the cloud to the device. The high quality means high speed, safety, and accuracy. It's like a highway, allowing your information to reach users safely, quickly, and closely connecting users with your apps. With such a high speed link, it is a piece of cake to prove DAU. According to statistics, after using push, the overall improvement rate of DAU has increased by 10%. You may wonder whether it is so powerful, because the freeway will be blocked in holiday. Will your freeway also be blocked? Then we will come to the second point. High reliability. There is a high arrival rate of the system level message channel provided by Huawei Push. How? The overall arrival rate is as high as 99%. Isn't it extremely powerful? It does not stop there. It will push millions of messages per second and tens of billions every day. Moreover, by November 2019, Huawei Push System has served more than 190 countries. It also has a magic power that your message can be delivered even without turning on. You may ask why. Why is it so magical? Because Huawei Push adopts a unified message center. Therefore, messages can reach through it without app startup. Isn't such a highway really powerful? The third point, precise push. As we just mentioned, high speed is only one aspect. And the accurate arrival is our strong point. What does it refer to? For example, I like to travel. If I can collect information I'm interested in every time before I go there, it is a kind of accurate delivery. Many efforts have been made to achieve this effect. We need to collect the user's concerns, his location, the information he focuses on most frequently, and what he pays attention to at what time. Only after collecting the data can accurate portrait be obtained. With a portrait, we can implement our operation. The key is the classification and the collection of users' behaviors. How to accurately obtain and distinguish them, and what can Huawei offers us in this respect. 
actually, it can segment and position users in all aspects. There are subdivision functions such as theme, label, timing, grouping, etc. in Huawei Pushkit. Let's find out what we can do with these functions. For example, users can subscribe to themes. The similar scenario is that we can push the football match results to subscribers of the football channel. This is the precise positioning. For another example, we can label users according to their behaviors. The similar scenario is if a user has a food label, we can launch local specialty restaurants for those tourists. This is a combination of positioning and label. In addition, we can send push messages regularly. If we find the users use our app at 10 a.m. every day, we will send them the latest hot information that they are interested in at 7 a.m. With a regular transmission, we don't need to get up early, which perfectly solves the hard problem of operators. There are many of the subdivisions provided by Huawei PushKit, which can refer to on the official website of Huawei Developer. The fourth point, Rich Modes. Many modes are available in Huawei Push. From the picture, there are Text Mode, Graphics Context Mode, Large Text Mode, and a User Defined Mode. Besides, there is equipped with sound and a vibration for notification. The user's acceptance of push messages has been greatly improved, helping us to define highly personalized messages to attract them. Having hearing so many advantages and functions, you may wonder whether it is complicated with a complex process. No, contrary to your worries. Here comes the last point. 5. Simple operation with powerful functions. Relied on the powerful management console, we can easily achieve various personalized requirements. For example, we can make group definitions, send push to specific groups, and implement it regularly which can be easily completed in the cloud of Huawei. Intuitively, simply, and systematically. In addition, there are detailed push data analysis stored in Huawei console, making you get the first-hand data more easily and quickly. We will show you a detailed introduction about it later in a practical training camp. Except sending push in our cloud, there is an API application server able to highly customize your own scenarios in combination with various business. It will also be introduced in the following practical training camp. Combined with the above advantages, Huawei Push System is an effective tool for people pursuing high DAU. Next, it is our practical training camp. Part 2 Practical Training Camp There are two parts in a practical training camp. 1. Examples of Huawei PushKit usage scenario and demo. Through specific scenarios, we can have some insight into Huawei PushKit once again. Through a demo combination specific scenarios, we will show you how to use it. 2. Practical training of Huawei PushKit. This is about the code that developers are concerned about the most. Let's deal with the first part. Examples of Huawei Push Kit usage scenario and demo. Since there are many scenarios for push messages, let's suppose that we are a news and information company with a news and information app. 80% of our users are office workers. They are used to get up at 10 a.m., have lunch at 12, get off work after 7 p.m., and go to bed around 11 p.m. Our user Xiaomin is one of them. He works as a programmer and has always been concerned about the Harmony OS. He's also an electronics enthusiast. Pays attention to the weather forecast and goes to the gym occasionally. He works at Xiaochi Beijing. Xiaomin has subscribed to several channels in our app, mobile digital weather fitness and he also follows Huawei's official channel. After getting up at 8 o'clock in the morning, he checks his phone first habitually, finding that he will receive several messages on time at 8 o'clock every day, including the weather forecast as well as interested news. 
Before lunch, he will get food recommendation around the company, and at 8 p.m. he will receive the latest information he focused on in succession. These can come true one by one through Huawei PushKit. Let's have a taste of these capabilities with a demo. This is the theme adding page of a new app. We can subscribe to topics we're interested in, and receive relevant information later. For example, we choose three topics: mobile phone, computer, and Huawei. We can see that after clicking the theme, mobile phone, we will be prompted with a message of successful subscription. Because here we associate the topic classification of the application with a subscription topic pushed by Huawei. When we click the button, we will simultaneously subscribe to the three topics pushed by Huawei, which are mobile phone, computer, and Huawei correspondingly. In this way, subsequent push message can be realized through the push service. Click the finish button, and we will see a list of information related. To the topics we subscribed to, in order to better display the rich styles, we simulated sending three topics messages, one push message for each topic. Here are the two modes of push messages: graphics context mode and the test mode. Sun and vibration prompts are also available when the push message is received. Huawei also provides a cloud message push platform, on which operators can achieve sending. Message timely and conveniently. The specific information will be introduced in the later video. Developers can refer to the official website of Huawei Developers Alliance. We also associate the top message with the user's topic list. When we click a topic message, we will jump to the corresponding list. This push message mode, combined with the scenario, can serve us a lot of development time, which will help us reach users faster. And more accurately with efficient operation, and greatly improve the app active user. For more push services, please visit the official website of Huawei Developers Alliance. Demo broadcasting. How do we implement the functions in demo? Now let's come to the second part, the practical training section of the application. First of all, we will explain the interaction process of Huawei PushKit. This is the design concept of Huawei Push. Only when we fully understand the design concept. Can we better use it and give full play to its maximum effect? This interaction diagram is based on the example of sending notifications. The figure shows us that it can be divided into nine steps. Let's first deal with the proper noun, which will help us better understand the following courses. Push token. It is the unique identification assigned by Huawei PushKit for each app on each device, which can guide the app server of Huawei Push Center find the target and send messages. However, it is not always the same, and it will change in the following scenarios, including but not limited to: one, app uploading and reinstallation; two, app call to logout token interface; three. Restore factory settings. Four, clear application data. All of these situations above will influence push token. So our suggestions on the best use practice are: one, do not judge the length of the push token based on the app because of its subsequently variable length. Two, push token business should be updated regularly. It is recommended to obtain push token every time you start the app. If there is any difference from that of the last time, report the latest one to your server. Three, do not use push token to trace or mark users. Well, we will share so much. Now we will formally explain the interaction process of PushKit. The figure shows us that it can be divided into nine steps. Let's know them one by one. Step one: App requests for push token. This is an app. It has successfully integrated Huawei PushKit. Then it sends the request of HMS for push token. HMS is Huawei mobile service. Step two, HMS request for push token. After receiving the request, HMS send it to Huawei push server. Exactly here for push token. Step three, Huawei push server sends push token back. The push server assigns a unique identifier. 
push token according to app information and related information of mobile devices and then send it back to the requester. Step 4. HMS returns push token. Having received the push token, HMS returns to the requested application. Step 5. Save push token. Application saves received push token to its server. This token is so and is needed when server sends push messages subsequently. Step 6. Send push message after receiving push token. We are able to send messages. Here, we use the example of sending messages with application server. Application server uses push token to send push messages to Huawei push server. Step 7. After receiving messages, Huawei push server distributes messages to the HMS on specific mobile phones. Step 8. Display notification message. In HMS, push notification is displayed on mobile phones by the same message sender. Step 9. Click notification. Users click the notification to start the application. There are many ways of processing after clicking a message. We will introduce it later in this video. This introduction to a push message flow is completed here. If there is something you don't understand, developers can refer to Huawei developer website. Next, we will talk about the process of connecting PushKit. We can see from the picture that the process of developing PushKit has a total of three steps. Step 1. Register the account of Huawei developers, aliens, and conduct the real name authentication. Step 2. Prepare the work before development, which includes four steps. First of all, configure App Gallery Connect, AGC. Second, add Huawei's Maven warehouse to the project's build, Grendel file. Third, configure the file of build, Grendel in the catalog of the app. Fourth, configure the manifest file. Detailed steps can be seen in the official website of Huawei Developers Alliance. Let's see its concrete position in the official website. Open the official website of Huawei Developers Alliance. Move the mouse to develop. We can see PushKit is in the drop-down menu. We open PushKit and click View Documents on the page. This is the concrete page of file development. We navigate to PushKit. App Development Android App Pre-preparation in the left directory. We click Preparations. On the right side, we may see the detailed steps for preparation work before development. We won't introduce the concrete contents. Developers may refer to them on their own. Here we can find other capabilities. This is other functions of PushKit. In the contents on the right, we can see that there are nine main functions. Please refer to the documents here for a specific use. All right, let's go back to our courseware. Step three, develop app. Let's enter the section of app development. First, integrate PushKit into your project, which requires four steps. Step one, open a build, Gradle file under the app catalog. Step two, adds the dependence of PushKit SDK. Step three, Click Sync now and wait for Gradle's synchronization to be completed. Step 4. Add a customized HMS push service in the file Android Manifest XML. This category needs to inherit HMS Message Service. HMS Message Service is a basic class in Huawei PushKit for receiving push messages. To receive Huawei push messages, developers need to declare HMS Message Services implementation class in Android Manifest XML in application. The method in basic class needs to be rewritten in the implementation class to process messages. All right, let's see how it is configured in code. Firstly, open a file build, Gradle in the directory of application, and add the dependence of PushKit SDK here. At this location, the version we use is 4.0.0.300. Click Synchronize and wait for Gradle's synchronization to be completed. Step 4. Open the file of Android Manifest XML and add HMS push service. This class inherits HMS message service. Thus, we have completed the inheritance of PushKit 
and can use PushKit's SDK. Next, we will talk about the acquisition of Push Token. First, create the object HMS instance ID. Then, call the get token method of HMS instance ID. HMS instance ID. For acquiring the class of AAID and push token, AAID is the identifier of applying anonymous devices. It is used for marking devices. It only exists in the application's installation stage, so it can change compared with the device hardware ID that cannot be reset. AID has better privacy attributes. Get token, a method of acquiring push token. This is a synchronous interface, so don't call it in a primary thread. If there is no AID, this method will generate AID first when it is caught. Push server then generates push token based on AID, so the generation of push token depends on AID. Regarding push token's return policy, the following points should be noted. 1. If the call of get token API fails, Huawei push will recall this API automatically, but the place that returns push token turns into the method a new token. This method is in the class HMS push service mentioned previously. 2. If server determines that the requested token has expired, a new push token will return through the method a new token. 3. If EMUI version on Huawei device is earlier than 10.0. Push token also returns through the method a new token. Let's look at the corresponding code implementation. First, create the object HMS instance ID. Then call the method get token. As it cannot be called in a primary thread, we start the call of new thread. There are two parameters in this method. The first one is app ID, which is the app ID distributed when we create an application on App Gallery, connect the platform. The second one is scope, namely the scope of authorization. At present, developers can import a fixed alphabetic string HCM. Thus, push token will return to us when it is generated. There are two places that it returns. One is direct return at here. The other is here. This is its method of one new token in class HMS push service. Thus, we acquire the push token. Then, we can use push token to send messages. In addition to obtaining token by using getToken method, in version 4.0, the function of automatic initialization is added. As long as following one method, token can be got without calling getToken. According to the figure, two ways are available to realizing automatic initialization. One. Add metadata configuration to the manifest file. Please take notice that the name here is unchangeable. 2. Call the set auto init enabled of HMS messaging in entering class. Press method parameter in true. The new token will return in the on new token method after the automatic initialization function is enabled. When the application is running, it will automatically apply for token for the registration of Huawei Push. Next, Let's look at the method of rewriting on message receiving, remote message. In the function of receiving push messages and code implementation in our customized class HMS push service, the return object remote message in the method is the message body we need. Remote message contains two messages. Remote message dot get data. The first one is app ID, is our customized message, i.e. pass through message. We can use a customized message form to show to our users. Remote message, get notification. It's the notification message. Once we get the message, we can process the following logical flow. Let's look at the code part. This is our customized class HMS push service. This is the method on message received. The return object to remote message in the method. This is a customized message, i.e. pass through message. We need to analyze data format by ourselves for pass-through messages. This is a notification message. Notification message is the instant message displayed in the drop-down list of the notification center directly by the system. If developers want to control whether applications allow displaying notification, they can call interface HMS messaging turn on push or HMS messaging turn off push. If developers don't call this interface, system allows displaying messages 
on notification bar by default. All right, this is all we need to talk about for receiving message. Now, let's look at the unclick of a push message. There are four ways of processing after a push message is clicked. 1. Start application, i.e. start the first page. 2. Open the designated web page. Open a web page that is already set. 3. Open a customized rich media page. Rich media refers to a resource pack that contains HTML and is compressed in ZIP. 4. Open a designated page inside the application according to URI. URI is the identifier of unified resources. It contains several main parts, scan, host, path. We customize these parts to form a URI which points to the class inside the application. Add this information to the inter URI in push message. The designated class can be found when push message are clicked. Maybe developers are more concerned about the transmission of relevant parameters in the process of clicking the push message. Let's take a look at the related introduction on the official website. Open the PushK development contents found in the video above and find app development, Android app, basic capabilities in the contents on the left. Click basic capabilities and the basic capabilities of PushKit are on the right. Let's find the section 2.5.1 and here is the processing of push click events with the detailed introductions on parameter passing, which can be referred by developers. This is all we have for onclick. Next, let's look at topic message. First, Let's talk about the points for attention when using the API of subscribe the topic messages. 1. 2,000 topics in one application instance is the maximum. 2. This function is only available for Huawei devices with the MUI version no less than 8.1. 3. The version of Huawei mobile service APK cannot be lower than 3.0.0. .0. All right, let's look at the API and code implementation of subscribe the topics. First, create the HMS messaging instance and call the subscribe method. HMS messaging is a singleton class. It provides the methods of subscribing and canceling topic. It also provides the methods of opening and closing receipt of messages on notification bar mentioned previously. Turn on push, turn off push. In addition, it provides the methods of sending on link messages. Developers can send messages to their own servers and application with this class. Then, Add monitor on complete listener. Last, process the subscribed result in callback method on complete. Next, let's look at the code part. Page 27. Creates the HMS messaging instance object. Call the subscribe method. Subscribe a topic message with a specific name regarding the object HMS messaging. We have introduced it in detail in previous part of this video. We will skip it here. Last, add the listener interface. Here, on complete listener. Process the subscribe the results in its callback method on complete. Next, we will continue talking about how to cancel subscription and accept the subscribed messages. As they are not difficult, we introduce them together. First, let's look at canceling subscription. First, create the HMS messaging object and call the unsubscribe method. The rest of the steps are the same as the previous ones. Add the monitor. Process the results in the callback method. Next, let's look at accepting subscribed messages. Messages are accepted in the same place, so topic message also returns in the method on message receive remote message of the customized class HMS push service with the same process as receiving messages. No more details will be introduced here. Next. Let's look at the code part of the canceling subscription. Code display. At first, create the HMS messaging instance. Add here and call its unsubscribe method. Add here, cancel the subscription of the topic message with a specific name. The parameter is the topic name. We have talked about the class HMS messaging. We will skip it here. It is followed by adding the uncomplete listener interface. Process the results of the canceling subscription in Uncomplete. Here, we have covered the main API in PushKit. Next, we will look at the process that Huawei Push Standard sends push messages regarding the specific steps of how to use server to send push messages. Developers can visit the Huawei developer website for reference. First, we will introduce the preparation for sending push messages. First, open Huawei developer website and click 
the administration center after logging in your account. Then find the function area of Huawei Push. Turn on the push service. Last, send push messages by adding notification buttons. Next, let's look at the process of sending notification messages. We can see from the picture that there are four steps when sending notification messages. In fact, the first steps are required when sending all push messages. To make it more virtual for developers, we operate at Huawei Push Cloud directly. Open the Push Center page. Click and add notification buttons. Step 1. Fill in the message content. First, name the message we are going to send to distinguish it from other push messages at Huawei Cloud. There are two options for the type. Notification message is notification and data message is path through message that we will talk about later. Here, we select the notification. Next, it is the message topic and the text. Action means what will happen when users receive and click the push messages sent by developers. There are two options. One is to open developers application program. We have talked about it previously. The other is to open the web page. Here, we select the first one. Application page, we select the opening application homepage. Step two, select the push scope. There are three options. Option one, design native device. We can implement according to push token. Option two, user classification. It can be implemented accurately based on Huawei and the lazy service. Option three, subscribe the topic user group. We have talked about the concept of subscribe the topic. Here, we select design native device and fill in the push token we accurate previously in device token. We can click the estimated user number and the system calculates the number of users that meets the condition, which is one. Step three, select the push time. Messages can be sent instantly or on schedule or according to developer's designated cycle. Remember Xiaoming receives weather notification at eight o'clock every morning in a demo. It is accomplished the right based on the cyclic sending that is set here. The notification we send to users has a period of validating, 14 days at most. Step four, select the channel. Channel ID is notification channel. Add features to Android. Notification setup may vary in different channels. For example, ringing sun, whether to display lock screen and horizontal screen, etc. Another one is priority. We can select the different levels according to the importance of push messages. We select the high here. Click submit. Then we can get the prompt pop-up window of the sending successfully. Here, we have sent a notification message successfully. It is easy to learn, isn't it? We have finished talking about the process of sending notification messages. Next, let's look at what a customized message is and how to send it. When developers want to send instruction to user's device, they will see customized message, which is different from notification. It has its own way of display. The mission of customized message is to use the ability of Huawei message channel and to pass through the developer's application program, which determines specific tasks. It has a similar sending process to notification, which also includes four steps. Let's show how it works at cloud. Step one, for type, we need to select the pass through message. Message content can be key value combination or the string in the format JSON, filling as needed. Here, we're filling the customized JSON strings. Next step, step two, select the push scope, the same as sending notification. Step three, select the push time, the same as sending notification. Step four, here, only channel ID is needed and there is no priority. Click submit and then we can get the prompt pop-up window of sending successfully. This is the process of sending customized messages. Next, let's look at the process of sending topic messages. We can see from the picture that there are also four steps when sending topic messages. Let's show how it works at cloud. Step one, fill in the name, select notification for type, fill in the title and the content of this notification. Click notification action, open application and select the home page for a specific application page. Then click next step. Step two, select the push scope. The following is important. We select the subscribe the user here. We can see that there is a topic list below. By clicking the list, we can see all the topics that have been subscribed. We select the phone. Step three, there's no difference here. Step four, there's no difference here either. Click submit 
then we can get the prompt pop-up window of sending successfully. The device that has subscribed the phone topic can receive messages. This is the process of sending topic messages. All right, we have finished the talking about the process of sending messages here. For more information and usage, please refer to the materials on our official website. We have finished the introduction to Huawei PushKit here. Now let's summarize it. The main contents of this video are divided into the following point. One, PushKit's advantages. Two, PushKit's interaction process. Three, accurate push token and receive push message. Four, subscribe topic message. 5. Send push message from Huawei Push Sender. If you need more information, please refer to the following Huawei developers, Aliens website. If you have any question in the development process, you may also give feedback of the information through the following mode. Thanks for your time. Goodbye.